Well, welcome to the last weekend roundup in May and of the school year. And of the school year, yeah. Had our last day of school today for our school kids. They were quite happy yes. to be out. I would say school. a stampede would kind of explain. Like a release the hounds uh -huh. type of a moment. Um, yeah, the, the teachers were also quite happy too. They yes. um, were so grateful for all of our teachers and our staff uh, who made what was objectively a very difficult year uh, bearable for all of us. I mean, but but more than that, I mean, they, they, they allowed our kids to learn yeah. um, in a very, very difficult environment. So um, our thanks goes out to our teachers and our parents, too, for being flexible um, in what was a very, very uh, interesting school year. But we got through it, and uh, hopefully this fall will be, mm. be more normal. Exactly. So, yeah, and thank you for your support of our parish and our school, because that's, I think, a, a ministry that really stood out this year um, that was offered by Catholic parishes. So yeah. you helped make that possible by supporting the whole works. So thank you. Yeah, we did not have any COVID spread within the school this or year. Or youth group or yeah. in the parish itself. We've yeah. been really, really fortunate, and I think it just shows how thoughtful everyone has been the whole time. Yeah. Um, we've walk also got, yeah, Walkathon. Uh, Walkathon was very successful this year. Wildly uh, successful. Wildly successful. We yes. raised about over $25,000 yes. uh, for school improvements and upgrades. So we're very grateful to all of you parishioners and families for pledging for our Walkathon. Uh, it was a great time. The kids had a blast uh, doing, all, doing all the walking. So and we yeah. were out there too. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's almost yeah. a 500% increase from the last one. Yeah, so that's very impressive. It is great. Um, golf tournament's coming up uh, uh, this coming or week from today at, at the landings at Spirit Golf Club. I don't know if there's still registration available, but you can always check. Yeah, always check. Should be a good time. Mm -hmm. And um, the auction is now online for that golf tournament. In fact, uh, we have a couple show and tells. Yes, uh, these are some of the artwork that the students have made in their classes. Uh, one is the church, one are some really unique uh, copper yeah. engravings. Copper engravings on there. You, I don't know how well you can see this on here, but they're each engraved with something different. Everything from like a blues logo to a basketball to flowers to all kinds of cool stuff. And I don't know who the uh, red faced demon is that's saying mass. It's probably, probably me. Probably, it's probably you. Me. You're just warm, probably, yeah. or sunburned from golfing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of neat. It's our church, and then you get the little thumbprints that are of each of the students. So anyway, these are just a sampling. There's more of the artwork that's for auction, yep. class work, uh, in the vestibule of church this weekend. So you can enjoy a little uh, informal art show. Yep. I'll be out there right. playing golf, too, so you can watch me fail miserably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Protect your windshield. Yes. <laughs> All right. And the bidding is open until June 2nd gotcha. on the auction. Memorial Day, uh, as you know, is this Monday uh, where we honor and, and pray for and thank all of our uh, servicemen and women who have given their life in protection of yeah. our freedom and in service to our country. So we all owe them a debt of gratitude, and, and the best way to, to repay that is with prayer for the repose of their soul and the comfort of their families. As with our other national holidays, we will have one Mass at 9 a.m. on Monday. Yeah, pray for those who made the ultimate sacrifice uh, mm -hmm. for all of us. Um, again, just a reminder, uh, as far as COVID rules, uh, the mask mandate uh, only applies to those who have not received a vaccination against COVID, uh, and this includes in the church and in the chapel as well. Um, so we're gonna, just asking folks to please still abide by that. This is the CDC guidance that, that we're adopting here. So uh, we're just asking folks to please abide by that. If you've already been vaccinated, uh, the choice to wear a mask is up to you. Great. Uh, our group, uh, grief support group is starting to meet again, uh, knowing that especially in a pandemic, the loss of a loved one can be so disorienting, um, devastating and, and isolating. And, and like I said, even more so now where we've been cut off from each other. So this group is really something that is so helpful to people. Um, so please know if you've lost a loved one, uh, you are welcome to attend. And this will be six Tuesdays. Uh, from July 6th to August 10th from 7 to 9 p.m. in our school library. And uh, more information and registration can be handled through Deacon Ron Ruther. So yeah. we invite you to contact him for more info. And we're also in the process of updating our 2021 parish guidebook. Um, so we're asking folks to help us out if there have been any changes, additions, deletions to 
any of your records here at Paris. So everything from your address to phone numbers, email addresses if you're preparing to move soon, uh, just the number of people in your house. It's sort of like a yearly Paris census, you could almost you could almost say that. Just so that all of our, up, our records are updated so that we have the most up-to-date contact information for you so uh, that we can reach out to you if you need us uh, for any reason whatsoever. Um, so call the parish office if you have any updates to make uh, and they can get that taken care of for you real quick. Yeah, and that's really helpful. I know there's been a number of times I've called, tried to call a parishioner and that number is no longer in service. Um, and maybe that's by design. Maybe they gave that number on purpose. Uh, but if we want to get a hold of you, uh, we really do need to know your right contact information. And we never give that information to Correct. anyone else, you know, for fundraisers or political things or anything no. like that. Um, so that is all. We're not, we're not Facebook or Amazon. That's so. right. Or Google. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, and then this past weekend, we had a lot of baptisms. Yeah, uh, we had a lot of baptisms. Yeah, Yuli Lau, uh, daughter of Keone and Joanna. Uh, Matthew Sinecrack, my nephew, uh, son of Matthew, and my sister Michelle. You did uh, this one. Yes, Philip, Philip O'Brien, Philip Charles Tig O'Brien. Uh, and then Gianna Simpson was also baptized as well. So congratulations to uh, all those who were baptized. Uh, another sacramental note, at least, for this weekend uh, tomorrow morning on Saturday, our Archdiocese is blessed. We're going to have six men ordained to the Holy Priesthood for our Archdiocese. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful occasion. I know I'll be down there at the cathedral tomorrow morning, uh, but we're, I just encourage you to pray for all of them. Uh, the night before your ordination could be a bit of an anxiety-inducing experience. I don't know first-hand experience for you. It was a little bit for me, uh, so just pray for them uh, and as they lay down their lives for the church tomorrow. Uh, and of course, we continue to pray for more vocations to the priesthood and religious life uh, all around the church, around our archdiocese, but also from our parish. You know, vocations start in the home, uh, and it's very important that we, as a parish, do everything we can, and even among our families too, uh, to promote vocation to promote vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, this Sunday is uh, one of the last of the specialty Sundays. You know, we just ended Easter time with Pentecost last week. Now we have the Feast of the Holy Trinity, and then next week we'll have Corpus Christi, and then we're back into the, the regular flow of things. Uh, but, so Trinity Sunday, hmm, always a good time to yeah, preach on that. Yeah, easiest weekend to preach heresy, um, <laughs> because it's so easy to do when talking about the Trinity. Um, Which is the central mystery of our faith. Yeah, the course. central mystery of our, of our faith. Um, I'm going to be kind of talking about how the Trinity is a mystery, how everything that we can use to describe it doesn't really um, come close to encapsulating the fullness of it. And I'm going to kind of use the analogy of being in a family, like being a parent, being a husband, a father, or a wife, or mother, or a, or a son, or daughter. You know, no words can truly adequately describe what that is and everything that that entails, you know, in joyful moments, difficult moments. Um, it's a mystery, and mysteries are meant to be lived. The only way we can fully understand that mystery is to live in it. Um, you know, to, to be a son, to be a daughter, to be a husband or a father, or a wife or a mother. So um, I'm just going to talk about how we're called to live in that mystery, but also the gospel um, is the great commissioning of the apostles, that we're called to help others live in that mystery too, uh, to help others embrace that mystery and to live in that mystery of Trinitarian love. So Great. I'm going to do kind of like a two-part deal. The first is there's, there's one God, uh, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and a lot of times we try to make or pick other gods, but there is only one God. Um, and then even though this God is the, the Lord of everything, he's all powerful, he's, he's everything, he chooses to share his name with us. And whenever someone shares a name with you, it, it's at the beginning of a relationship. It's yeah. the almost uh, giving you power over them in, in a small way of saying, you can call me by this name. So that's kind of the two uh, things is, first of all, I think it's good for us to reflect on, at least for me, uh, do I really, I might say, yeah, God is God, but do I actually live that? Or do I make other things God, you know, money, power, comfort, all those things. And then secondly, realizing that this one God of the whole universe has said, call me by this name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach other people my name when you go and baptize them. And um, it's the name that gives us freedom, the, the name of Jesus. And Anyway, so just kind of something a little bit different. Uh, Father Schneier and I were talking last week of trying, it's really easy as a priest to go back into like seminary mode and be like, oh, here are my notes from class <laughs> and let's, uh, let's have a little teaching. And 
that's good in the right context, but sometimes it's nice to move beyond just the, yeah. the teaching. It's very easy to do a teaching homily on Holy Trinity Sunday. Yes. Very yes. easy to. So yeah. Yeah, trying to move out of that a little bit this year. So Great. So I hear them setting up for the uh, eighth grade party tonight, <laughs> uh, which is great. And I don't know. It's a weird. Um, yeah. It's gray. It's Gray, cold. chilly. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't just feel a, like summer, but. No, it doesn't. Yeah. The air conditioning will get a break uh, yeah. this weekend. So have a, a safe, wonderful celebration of the holiday uh, weekend. And don't forget to pray for our men and women who have served uh, and given their life. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you in church. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great weekend, everybody. God bless.